Welcome. Thank you for standing by. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. At the end of today's presentation, we will conduct a question and answer session. During that time, all lines will be live and interactive. It is advised when not speaking to utilize the mute function on your phone. If you do not have a mute function, you may press star six to mute and unmute. Today's conference is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. I would now like to turn the meeting over to David Devorny, so you may begin. Great. First, I just want to thank you all for being here. I know uh, it's been quite a while to get here to this point. Uh, you know, you had to go through the application process, which is not a simple one. And, uh, and now you have access to $4 million or up to $4 million over the next two years. And you're probably wondering, how do we get started? What are the next steps? What do I have to do? And um, uh, I'm to help you through that. And hopefully, we'll be helpful in, in uh getting you on the road to success with your CCPHP grant. But the overriding message, I think, for today's webinar is that we're very excited about this program, and we're glad to have all of you with us. And understand that we moved the time of this webinar back by half an hour because of a, um, a SPAR webinar, which was uh, scheduled actually after we originally planned the webinar. Um, I apologize uh, for the changes in your schedule, but also for subjecting you to back-to-back -back webinars in one afternoon. We're going to talk a little bit about SPARS on our webinar, but not really as much as uh, you just heard. And we think we have some good news for you in terms of the uh, of what we're expecting you to collect in SPARS. Um, so um, with that, I will uh, get started with today's webinar. So if you have questions, please type your questions in the question box, and we will try to address them. Um, otherwise, you know, you can just wait for the verbal question and answer at the end of the presentation. And that would be great, too. If we run out of time to do questions, uh, you have our email addresses there in this presentation, and we'll send this presentation out to you. So you know how to find us, and uh, that's our job. So um, look forward to trying to get your questions answered as we move forward. Today, um, uh, my colleague, uh, Emily Bigson and I are going to provide you an introduction and an overview. Um, grant Management Specialist, uh, Louis Velasco, is here, and he's going to talk you through the grants management portion of today's presentation. Uh, I have uh, uh, me again to talk a little bit about technical assistance and resources we have available for evaluation, um, some uh, people related to the, the Medicaid demo for the certified community health clinics, and then the certification process. And then Penley is going to um, wrap up with a couple of slides on the impact statement um, process and some key dates for you to pay attention to. And then we'll end with questions. Um, um, Sorry, technical difficulties. There we go. I do want to kind of uh, introduce you to um, the federal team. Uh, and most of us are here in the room. Um, a couple couldn't make it, but um, uh, you'll be getting to know them in, in due course. Um, so I did want to just kind of uh, go around the room. And for folks who are here, if you just want to say uh, your name and yourself, that'd be great. Um, I'm Dave Horney. I'm the branch chief for the Community Support Program Branch, uh, the branch that uh, houses the TCBC expansion program. My name is Mary Blake, and I'm really looking forward to working with those of you I'll be working with. Yes, this is Henley Biggs. I'm also excited to work with you. Rastanetta, also a grant project officer for CCBHC. Louis Velasco, I'm your grant specialist for the CCBHC program. And uh, people couldn't be here today. Um, Joy uh, Mobley is actually usually the ringleader of this whole operation, and unfortunately, she had to be out of the office today. Um, you're stuck with me uh, to run through a lot of these slides. And Rachel Seedle is the most recent addition to our team. And uh, she's also going to join, I think, for portions of today's webinar, but she had another commitment. But um, looking forward to working with her on these grants as well. Today, just uh, a couple of uh, introductory remarks before we get into the, uh, the webinar. Um, you know, it's a really important program. Uh, I think everybody on the phone we all work in the behavioral health system. We know that our system is a uh, method system, a system that provides people with an incomplete set of support. Some people do portions of the system really well and other portions not well. Uh, other communities, you know, have really just bare bones support. Um, you know, really across our states and communities, there's just a patchwork. And I think we have a lot of really good, hardworking people trying to make the best of the systems they have. And that includes folks who are at state level trying to build systems. That includes uh, providers. That includes peers, caseworkers, you, you name it. There's, there's all number of people who are doing their best 
but all working within the same framework. And that framework is a framework where our team drives us into the uh, corners of service delivery, uh, where services are offered from multiple different providers and often not in a coordinated fashion, where health is siloed from physical health. And is really a poor care experience and poor outcomes and poor quality for the people we serve. These, I think, unlike almost any other intervention in government, have the potential to change that. Our goal is very simple, to take the nation, to give the mandate and standards to provide a comprehensive set of service to serve people uh, with uh, mental substance use disorders. And then with that, to provide sufficient financing that is actually an achievable goal. This is much larger than the usual grant we would give to a clinic. Our clinical grants tend to be around $100,000 per year, and this is a $2 million per year grant. So this is a really bold undertaking on your part, and it's a big leap to, to take that type of capacity and to try and make that kind of systemic change. But thank you for, for taking that leap with us. And I know that you all kind of share the vision that it's really about providing those comprehensive services and helping people with, with uh, mental substance use disorders really reach their full potential and leave the lives they want to live and pursue their recovery. So I just want to, to thank that, and uh, those are my introductory remarks, and we'll move into the meat of the presentation. I'm going to turn it over to Tenley, I believe, right? So your government project office's role. We are the federal representative responsible for overall grant monitoring and grantee compliance to the requirements of the grant award. We have all program changes, which includes budget, project scope, project director, and key personnel. We review and discuss your annual reports. We all review and discuss your GIPRA or NOMS data, which you'll more about um, in this presentation, and then, of course, supporting you in achieving your program goals. So um, these are some typical topics that we see quite often in the beginning of a startup of a grant. Um, things in such as changing key staff, you know, sometimes at the time of the application you had one person that you thought would be your project director, but then there's turnover or you end up hiring somebody else. And so before you even do anything else, you have to let us know immediately, us and your GPO and um, this. And so tell us, we have an asterisk there because you also have to submit um, a key personnel request change through ERA Commons, um, which is how you first, you know, submitted the application. Um, I would suggest that prior to even submitting that through ERA, contact us so that we can give you the information about what is required in um, um, personnel request. Of course, the major one is project director position. So if you have a, a project director, that's considered key staff. That's the person you want to um, give all the information. So just let us know. If there's a change in scope of the project, if you're not sure what that means, contact your GPO. Whatever you outlined in your application, that's what we're going to hold you accountable to. If you have any questions, I know some folks have already reached out to, to some of us. If you have questions about that, you're not really sure, you want to think it through, you know, contact your GPO. If it's related to the budget, contact Lewis. You know, Lewis and the team, we coordinate really well together so we can you know, set up a time and talk through some of the things that you might be going through. Um, again, budget questions, contact both of us, but Lewis will be the main um, point of contact. SPARS, <coughs> excuse me, as, as I mentioned earlier, you were just on a webinar about SPARS, and so um, anything related to SPARS, though, you should be contacting us or the SPARS help desk, which is listed at the very bottom of the slide. Um, anything related to SPARS, you know, grant management is not, um, you know, point of contact for that. If day-to-day -day project questions, again, please contact your, your GPO, and then anything related to the project goals. Information, um, some of you may know that we've awarded up to 52 grantees so far, up to $2 per year for two years, and you started on September 30th. Now I'm turning to David. Thanks. Uh, the purpose of this grant program, as I said a little bit earlier, is to increase access to and improve the quality of community behavioral services through the expansion of certified community behavioral clinics, CCHCs. The C expansion grant program must provide access to services for people with serious mental illness, substance use disorders, including opioid disorders, disorders and children and adolescents with serious emotional disturbances, and individuals, of course, with co occurring disorders, with co occurring mental health. Sam expects that this program will improve the health of individuals across the nation by providing comprehensive community-based mental 
and substance use disorders services, treatment for co-occurring disorders, and advanced integration of behavioral health with physical health care. Uh, we uh, use uh, evidence-based practices on a more consistent basis as a result of this grant and promote access to uh, high-quality care um, using this grant program. A services grant program, so SAMS intends that services grants result in the delivery of services as soon as possible after award. At the late, we expect you to uh, start implementing services under this grant um, by the fourth month after uh, the grant has been awarded. Um, key personnel uh, earlier, uh, and I think Lewis is going to go into a little more detail about this later, but the key personnel for this grant are the project director, which is a, a minimum level of effort of 0.5 uh, full-time equivalent positions, and then uh, the evaluator. So those are the two positions you need approval for uh, for the grant. Required activities under the grant. Uh, use uh, the services grant funds in this box primarily to provide services. That's what they're, they're there for. Um, and in providing the following services, you have to meet the CCBHC certification criteria. And you'll link here on the, the website, uh, on the, on the, on the uh, two criteria. They're also on our SAMHSA website, um, and there's a, um, on the CCBHC uh, page. Um, and uh, a checklist of these criteria was included in the funding opportunity announcement um, that you uh, uh, all responded to. Uh, they are really the roadmap to implementing a CCBHC. So, so I say if you want to read one document to understand what we want to accomplish under CCBHC, start with these criteria. So uh, I just want to underscore how important um, these criteria are for you and the work we're doing. So what do they include? Uh, they include uh, a lot of different areas, but they uh, require the delivery of nine different um, service areas, uh, thinking with uh, the criteria I just mentioned. Those are crisis mental health services, including 24 mobile, 24 hour mobile crisis teams, emergency crisis intervention services, crisis stabilization, um, screening and diagnosis, including risk assessment, uh, treatment planning or similar processes, including risk assessment and crisis planning, and combat outpatient mental health of substance use services. Uh, these four you see on the screen are services that must be provided directly by the CCBHC itself. Services can be provided by a direct operating organization, but for these four core services, they have to be provided by the CCBHC organization itself. I just want to make that distinction. The one speak to that is those crisis mental health services. Uh, if those services are provided already by some kind of state sanctioned network that exists in your area where your CCBHC is, uh, then that is acceptable. Those crisis services can be provided by other existing networks. But if you don't have that type of network in the area that you are that is state sanctioned, then you are responsible for providing those crisis services under this grant. Uh, we expect that people provide targeted case primary care screening monitoring of key health indicators, uh, monitoring for adverse effects of medications, including monitoring of metabolic syndrome, targeted case management, psychiatric rehabilitation services, Social support opportunities to establish models such as clubhouses that provide therapeutic individual and group interactions, assistance with employment, housing, and other community recovery support. Comprehensive community recovery supports, including peer support, counselor services, and family support. Intensive community-based mental services for members of the armed forces and veterans. And community treatment. Community treatment is a little bit unique. This is something that was not specifically mentioned as a part of the CCBHC uh, Medicaid demonstration is not explicitly mentioned inside the certification criteria, but it is a requirement uh, of this uh, CCBHC extension. Okay. To establish cooperative relationships with judicial officials and court systems, uh, to provide uh, assisted outpatient treatment in order if that's applicable in your state. We also expect you to establish an advisory work group comprised of individuals with mental and substance use disorders and family members to provide input and guidance to the CCBHC on implementation and services and policies. You also develop and implement plans for sustainability to ensure delivery of services once federal funding ends. I want to talk a little bit about uh, the financial management aspects of your grant. Thank you, Dave. Well, these are the topics we'll cover on, on the management portion of, of the presentation. Uh, so, 
you have the grant, you're probably already a little familiar with the ERA common system. But a brief overview of the different tasks, and the steps of screenshots of the ERA commons uh, in, the, in the different tasks, plus forward tasks they'll be doing throughout this grant. So this is a home screen. If you go to the era.nih.gov web address, uh, we now require all post award requests and responses to special conditions your awards were issued with or mission of FFR and programmatic progress reports through ERA Commons. Uh, so you will have a choice but to become familiar with the system. So log on, you click on that orange box on the right hand side, Commons Login, and enter your username and password. On the screen, the welcome screen you'll see once logged on. So we'll go over a few different tasks, but we're going to review, since you guys at this point, responding to special conditions. Uh, you can access that a few different ways. Uh, since this is not an NIH grant, it's a non-research grant, so you go to that rightmost tab, the research, and click Manage Post Award Amendments or Manage or Continuous. With responding to special conditions, uh, there are three different ways you can act the terms tracking tab where you would respond to these special conditions your award may have. May have. Uh, this link has an overview, I believe, page 10, section 4, I think it is, is on the step-by-step -step, uh, guide for, for responding to special conditions. But some examples of special conditions your award have gotten programmatic. Uh, we might be asking you for for additional details or or asking you to revise your budget, maybe some unallowable costs or you know over budgeting certain things. Uh, if you're in direct cost rate agreement, if you need a copy of that, we may have asked you for that on the award. If individual uh, name came out, a uh, key staff individual came out on, on system uh, pan.gov then we, we would have placed that special condition on it. Uh, federal debt, disparity impact, other kind of encompasses anything else. So those are the examples. So to begin with, depending on your role within your organization, you, you're, you would see different teams within ERA Commons. Uh, the authorized organizational rep or signing official in the organization, uh, the DSO role, this person would not see the list of all grants for your organization upon accessing this, uh, this section. You'd have to enter the grant number and search. In this case, they access that through the tab that was on the previous slide and search their grant number. And at the bottom, the, the grant came out. They would view terms tracking that way. The P or PI role, if you that's the, the role your organization assigns you, you have a list of all grants. So in this case, this grant, this individual has two different grants showing access with whichever grant they're looking for, the, the special conditions through the new terms tracking. Uh, comment on the right hand side. Um, in terms of roles assigned, you would go to that individual the, of your organization, the SO role, and that person would control the different assignments and grants that they, I guess, would allow you to see within your organization. So that, that's the individual in, on your side that you should be working with to have the proper roles assigned to, your, to yourself. So I guess just a, a, two ways you can access special conditions or terms. You could access it through the amendments. Uh, that was on that first uh, original uh, slide when you logged in on the non risk tab or via the Manage Continuations tab. Um, so, in this case, it all leads to the same place. This is the view terms tracking where it will, you go to see once you, you click on view terms tracking, each condition or term would have its own row. And respond to it individually. Um, and in this case, there, the, uh, the sorry, grantee clicked on the initiate 
or to respond to the special conditions. Uh, any response has limits of 10 attachments and they have to be in PDF format. Uh, the submission status and date will update when you submit it. I'll see your entire all together as one consolidated view. You can click the view submission for a preview of what you would submit before you ultimately There will be cases when we still do need additional information or something is missing. In that case, we would, uh, we would send a back to you, which stands for request additional materials. In case, if you were responding to a RAM of ours, you go back to the view terms tracking area, initiating uh, the response to the you'd be revising the documentation you already submitted, you'd either remove